Hello, today we're going to discuss electric circuits. A circuit is a closed path through which electric current flows. Circuits must have two main components. They must have a voltage source, so a battery or plugging something into a wall outlet. And there must be a closed path through which the current can flow. There cannot be any gaps in the path. That's how switches work. Switches, as you can see here, open up the circuit and do not allow current to flow. When that switch is closed, then the current flows through and you can see that the light bulb has lit up in this case. The different symbols we have that we use in circuits that may be new to you are shown here on the screen. The first one, this is for the voltage source. One long line and one short line. The long line represents the positive terminal. The short line represents the negative terminal. This in the middle is a symbol for a switch. This is an open switch. If it was a closed switch, then that line would be connected. It's an open and closed switch. And this last one is for a resistor. Okay. Sometimes you'll see this for anything that we call a load, which is using the current. So a light bulb, a lamp, a toaster oven, any of those things you could potentially see and they'd be represented by that resistor. This is an example of a simple circuit. In a simple circuit, you would have a voltage source. In this case, there are two batteries and you have some kind of resistor, a load, whatever you want to call that. Sorry about that. Um, and so we have a battery and we have a light bulb. Okay, so we just call a simple circuit any circuit that has a voltage source and only one resistor attached to it. When we have multiple resistors in a circuit, we call them one of two things. We can classify them. The first one is a series circuit. And this is an example of a series circuit because there is only one path that the current can flow through. The current leaves this positive terminal, has to flow through the first resistor, the second, and then the third before coming back to the battery. That doesn't mean a whole lot. Make a, doesn't mean a whole much to you right now, because we haven't seen how current can flow through different paths. But that is a series circuit. The most important thing to know about a series circuit is that the current is the same at all points. Okay, so current is the same in a series circuit. So the current at all points along this circuit through the resistors, through the battery, through the wires, is the same at all points, okay? The voltage that we have is used up by the resistors in the circuit. Okay, let's talk about that briefly. So the voltage support, the voltage source supplies a positive voltage, okay? Then along the way, some of the voltage is used up by each of the resistors. So we'll call this one negative delta V1, because that's resistor one, negative delta V2, that's resistor two, and negative delta V3 because that's resistor 3, okay? And if we were to add all of those things up, we would see that it would add up to zero. This is something called the loop rule, which says that all of the voltage supplied, remember voltage goes back to the idea of energy. This is an energy conservation statement. So the positive voltage that's supplied by the voltage source minus the individual voltage drops across each resistor, in this case all three of these, ends up equaling zero, okay? That is the loop rule. So you can interpret this as saying, whatever voltage is supplied by the voltage source is used up in all of the resistors. If there's only one resistor, it would use up all of the voltage. If there's multiple resistors, they use them up, uh, not necessarily equally, because that, that depends on the resistance. The more resistance, the higher the R value, the greater the voltage drop across each resistor because the current is the same throughout. So we're still going to use Ohm's law that we talked about previously. However, we're going to look at it in terms of multiple things in the circuit now. All right. So let's look at this series circuit. We have 12 volts being supplied by the battery, as you can tell down here. Okay. So 12 volts being supplied by the battery. Then we have three resistors in series. We have a one ohm resistor and two two ohm resistors that are used in a series. Okay. We know that the voltage is the same at all points in our circuit, okay? but the voltage drop depends on the resistance. So we're going to use 
Well, we just wrote on the board a second ago that loop rule, and we're going to say that the voltage supplied by the voltage source is equal to the voltage drop across each of our resistors. Okay, and we'll call this one resistor 1, resistor 2, and resistor 3. Okay? So if we think back to our relationship between current, voltage, and resistance, we have Ohm's Law. All right, so I'm going to write up here Ohm's Law. Just so remember that Ohm's Law said V equals I times R once we rearrange that. So we're going to take that and we're going to plug it into each of our situations here. Okay? So we're going to say the current times the total or equivalent resistance, that's I, it's REQ for equivalent, is equal to the current through resistor 1 times the resistance of resistor 1 plus the current times the resistance of resistor 2 plus the current in resistor 3 times the resistance of resistor 3. So we see that there is an I in every single term. Okay, and that I is the same. So the greater the R value then, depending on R1, R2, R3, the greater the voltage that's being used in that resistor. So let's get rid of all the I's because they're all the same. And we get the equation for the equivalent resistance of a series circuit. So if they just gave you three individual resistance values, and they want to know what the total resistance was in that circuit, for a series circuit, all you do is just add them all up. Okay, so that's equivalent resistance of a series circuit is equal to R1 plus R2 all the way up to however many resistors that you have. Okay? So in this case, we're going to use that to help us determine what the current is in our circuit. Rearranging Ohm's law that was up here, we get that I equals V over R. So in this case, the total current is equal to the voltage divided by the equivalent resistance. So in this example, my voltage that we saw over here was 12 volts. And my equivalent resistance, because this is a series circuit, is 1 ohm plus 2 ohms plus 2 ohms, so a total of 5 ohms of resistance. So we didn't divide 12 volts by 5 ohms, and we get 2.4 amps. So the current through this circuit is 2.4 amps, and that is at every single point along the way. All right? If we wanted to know what the voltage drop was across each, across each resistor, we would say that the voltage drop over here, so delta V1, is equal to I times R1. So we're going to take our current, the 2.4 amps, times my resistance, which was 1 ohm, and I get the voltage drop across this first resistor is 2.4 volts. Okay? I would then do the same thing for these two resistors, resistor 2 and resistor 3, and we're going to see that the voltage drop across resistor 2 is going to be 4.8 volts, and the voltage drop across resistor 3 also 4.8 volts because they have the same resistance. An easy way to check our work is to see, do these three voltages, delta V1, delta V2, and delta V3, do those three add up to whatever is being supplied in, by my voltage source? So if I were to add up 2.4 volts plus 4.8 volts plus 4.8 volts, I would get a total of 12. So that lets me know that I did my problem correctly. The most important thing to remember on a series circuit is this idea of finding the current because the current is the same all throughout. Okay, so that's the kind of way you want to start these problems anytime you have a series circuit. Remember, series, there is only one path for which the current can flow. Our second kind of circuit is a parallel circuit, and parallel circuits have multiple paths through which the current can flow. So if we look here, we see that there is this current that is leaving our battery. And then we get to this point right here, where now the current can break off into different paths. Okay, so we can have some current that flows through this resistor 1, and we could have some other current that flows through in, down to these other two resistors. Okay, 
Again, once we get here where this other the second junction is, it's going to break apart into two other currents. Okay, so we're going to have current that flows through resistor two, and we're going to have some current that flows through resistor three. Okay, and so what we should notice here, and then now that it comes back together again on this other side, the current coming out of that segment will be the same, and then the current going back to my battery will also be the same as it left the battery. Okay, each of these branches is getting though the same voltage. Okay, and that is the voltage that is supplied by my battery. So all of these are getting the same voltage. And this goes back to this idea of the loop rule, okay? If we were to make a loop right here, we know that the voltage drop through there all the way through has to be zero because then I'm saying all of the voltage is being used up by resistor one, okay? If we did the same thing for our other two loops, we would see that the voltage being used up by the resistor has to be the same all the way through because of this idea of the loop rule that we talked about earlier. Okay, Each branch gets the same amount of voltage, but the amount of current depends upon the resistor that's present in that branch. Okay, So going back to Ohm's law yet again. So the most important thing to remember about parallel circuits is this. The voltage in each branch is the same. For series circuits, remember, the current was the same in each branch. But for a parallel circuit, the voltage is the same in each branch. The current in these branches will be different if the resistors are different. If they have the same resistance, they would have the same current. The current that enters a junction, so right here, our junctions, I'm going to put some red boxes around here so we see our junctions. Here's a junction right here. Okay. Its corresponding junction is back here on this side. This is something called the junction rule, which says that as much current goes into a junction, so in this case right here, there has to be the same amount of current that comes out the other side, which is right here. So this current that flows through this yellow line, the yellow highlight, gets to this junction and breaks apart into the green line and the orange line. Okay? Then the green line gets here to this junction, and it breaks apart into the red and the blue. And the corresponding junction on the back side is over here. Okay. So the junction rule says as much current goes into a junction has to come out on the other side. And this is what we're going to use for a parallel circuit. Okay. Let's analyze the parallel circuit. We said earlier that the voltage was the same in each branch, and the current depends on the resistance in each branch. In this case, all of my resistors are the same, so it's gonna, not going to give us the best example, but it'll get the job done. Okay? So we're going to use this idea of the junction rule. And what we're going to say is that the current, the whole current in the system, is equal to the current through branch 1, plus the current through branch 2, plus the current through branch 3. And we'll say that this right here is branch 1, this is branch 2, and this is branch 3. And the total current is the current that leaves the battery and then comes back to the battery. All right? So again, we're going to use Ohm's law. And Ohm's law says that current equals voltage over resistance. Okay? So we're going to plug in and say that the total voltage in the system divided by the equivalent resistance of our system is equal to the voltage through branch 1 divided by the resistance of branch 1 plus the current through branch 2 divided by the resistance of branch 2 plus the current through branch 3 divided by the resistance in branch 3. And we know that the voltages are all the same. So we get something a little bit different here. All of my voltages cancel out not my current. And so I end up with this equation for the equivalent resistance of a parallel circuit that 1 over REQ equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Okay, so if they just gave us the three resistances, we could do that. I really think that doing it this way is easier, though. 
okay, and setting it up with the idea of the current instead of the idea of the resistance, okay? So we could find the current through each branch very easily. Let's come over here to our diagram. We know that current equals voltage divided by resistance. And so we know that each branch, in this case what I'm looking at first, gets 12 volts of current over 2 ohms of resistance, which then tells me that there are 6 amps of current in that first branch. Because they all have the same resistance, they all have the same current in each branch. That's not, though, the same as the current here, okay, the yellow area. The yellow area is going to be the sum of all of those currents. So in the yellow area, there's going to be 18 amps of current. Oops. Then what about this green area? What we had is the green area on the last slide, here and here. How much current is going to be there? Right, there's got to be 12 amps of current because there's 6 amps in each of these branches and this green area has to bring all of that current there. So there has to be 12 amps in the green areas and then there's only 6 over here on the far side which I think we said was, was red before. So only 6 amps there. Okay. So when we analyze a parallel circuit there's one of two ways we can do this. We can do the 1 over REQ and determine what the total current is in the system, or we can find the current in each branch and then add them up. Okay? One way we could then find the equivalent resistance of our circuit would be to say that V equals IR, where V was 12 volts, but the current was 18 amps. So my resistance is equal to... 12 over 18, which is 0 0.67 ohms, okay? 0 0.67 is less than any of these values. That's what you're going to notice for a parallel circuit. The equivalent resistance is always less than the smallest individual resistor. Something else pretty interesting about a parallel circuit is the more branches you add, the greater the current is going to be, and therefore, the lower the overall resistance of your circuit is. So the more branches you add in a parallel circuit, the lower the resistance will be, which is very counterintuitive to what we would think about with a resistor. Last thing we're talking about real briefly is this complex circuits. Complex circuits have both series and parallel characteristics. So if we were to look at this branch, or this circuit here on the left-hand side, current leaves... My battery, it will all go through R1, but then it breaks apart, and some goes to R5 and R7, some goes to R6, but then it will all come back together again on the back side, okay, the other side of my junction. So we would have to analyze that and recognize that we have several different pieces here. We have 5 and 7, which are in parallel to each other. Those two together are in, or sorry, those are in series together, 5 and 7 are. Those two are in parallel with number 6, and all of them are in series with number 1. Okay? So it's like a big puzzle. You have to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Over here we have another example, a little bit smaller example of a, of a complex circuit. All of the current leaves the battery, goes through the 4 ohm resistor, gets to junction X, breaks apart into these two components and then comes back together again on the back side. Okay? So if you recognize this, you see that resistor 3 and resistor 6 are in parallel to each other. So we'd have to treat that using the parallel rule. And they are in series with this 4 ohm resistor over here. Okay? So you have to treat these first as being in parallel together, and then add that resistance of these two to the 4 ohm resistor to get the overall resistance. All right, I think we covered circuits pretty good there. Thanks!